And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Sue to Sleep Stories. We are in the Bible in series, day 93. And before we pick up where we left off, and that is in Numbers chapter 29, I wanted us to revisit Numbers chapter 28 just a little bit to touch on a couple of things. Before we get into the eight major feasts of Israel, I'm not sure if I made that clear. I mean, I'm still getting to know His Word every day. I'll never know the Lord's Word. I'm always learning, so I do not claim to know everything in His Word. I leave it up to Him to reveal to me, but I do seek it out and dig as if for hidden treasure. That is my goal, daily. But sometimes, when I come across a certain book or a chapter, it's pretty, I mean, the revelation is pretty easy for me. And other times, oh my goodness, it takes sometimes months to understand what exactly I'm reading. Well, this is one of those times. Numbers chapter 28, I went back and restudied and wanted to make sure that I corrected anything that I may have said where I may have overlapped some feasts and I don't want to do that so I will re review um, the eight major feasts of Israel back then and then I want to touch on the daily sacrifice back then which always required the korban damid, which was the daily sacrifice in Hebrew. It was a defect-free male lamb with unleavened bread and wine. And the bread was unleavened because leaven represented sin. So this was holy consecrated bread and wine with a defect-free male lamb. Morning and night, the Lord called this my offering and my bread. In other words, the service and ministry of the Mishkan, that is the tabernacle, it constantly, these, this, this, these daily sacrifices, picture it, daily sacrifices constantly coming from the tabernacle, morning and night, in addition to those eight major feasts of Israel and more things, constantly foretold the coming of the great Lamb of God. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, who would be offered upon the altar of the cross to secure our eternal redemption. And you can find that in John 1, and Hebrews 9, 11 through 12. Well, the sacrifice of the land represents God's food, a pleasing aroma, a sweet aroma, the New King James Version says. For it most satisfied the hunger of God's heart. Talks about that also in Ephesians 5, 2. Imagine that. Imagine God being hungry. Where do we think hunger comes from? We're made in His image and likeness. So his spiritual hunger is satisfied with those daily sacrifices. And today, the hunger of God's heart is satisfied with our praise, our worship, our prayer, our studying his word, getting to know him, abiding in him, morning and night. Indeed, Jesus' offering upon the cross represents God's hunger for our atonement, our healing from the sickness of death, because it restored what was lost to him through sin, namely communion with his children. God could never be satisfied until he was able to let truth and love meet. And that's in Psalm chapter 85, verse 10. Then, I just want to also touch on what the 
prophet Samuel said to King Saul at the time, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, he said, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, to hearken, that is to listen to the Lord, is better than the fat of rams. Hearken can mean to hear, to heed, attend, pay attention. He feed in fin, which would be the Hebrew words for that. And again, we feed God by offering heartfelt prayer, by daily walking in faith. Faith is just trusting Him, by yearning for Him, by studying scripture, by participating in corporate worship. That means planted in a church where you gather and gather for worship, by giving acts of kindness for others and so on. Expressing our love for God is the deepest meaning of teshuva which is an answer or response in Hebrew to his great love for us, which is what John wrote in his first letter in his old age in 1 John 4, 19. Just as God feeds and sustains us through his love <laughs> and his word, so we feed him by our yearning, our prayers, our praise, and our worship. Some of this was shared by John J. Parsons. And then I also want to um, talk a little bit about the Jewish holidays before we go to Numbers chapter 29. A simplified overview is this. There are set times of the Lord, the sacred occasions which we shall celebrate each at its appointed time, and that's what they did. And it's all summed up in Leviticus chapter 23, which was the book between Exodus and Numbers. It's the single chapter of the entire Tanakh. It sums up everything. God's eternal plan from chaos to eternity. It, he ingeniously reveals this through the nature and timing of the seven or eight annual feasts of the Lord. Now what is the major feature of the feasts? Sacrifice. Now believers in Jesus or Yeshua HaMashiach were not responsible to keep these feasts, but knowledge of them enhances our trust in the Lord enhances our faith. Our Lord kept every one of them without fail. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, kept every single one without fail while on the earth. Even celebrating Peshach, Passover, on his last night on earth. As son of man. Now I will tell you what the feasts are called, when they happen and why they remain significant. You have the weekly feast, the Shabbat. You have the Passover, Peshach. You have the Chag Hamotzi, or unleavened bread. And that comes on the second night of the Passover, celebrated for seven days. Then you have the first fruits, the Yom Habikurim. And Jesus became our first fruit after his resurrection. Then you have Shavuot, the Pentecost, and Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. Then you have, this is so interesting to me, how much the Lord loves the sound of trumpets or shofars. You have the Yom Teruah, the week of trumpets, the feast of trumpets. Then you have the atonement, Yom Kippur. Then you have the feast of of Shukot or Tabernacles. And these happen based on the phases of the moon because God's calendar was based on the phases of the moon. The first three feasts usually fall between March and April, that is Pashach, 
unleavened bread and first fruits. And the fourth one, Shavuot, which is Pentecost, usually marks the summer harvest and occurs in late May or early June. And then the last three feasts, trumpets, Yom Kippur and Shukot, happen in September and October. So, I can go into more details, but I just wanted to give you an overview of that. Now, I always want to make sure that I correct anything when it comes to um, when it comes to the the feasts. So I hope that made it clear. So without further ado now, let's pray. Let's pray. Do Adonai, Elohim, Heavenly Father. Oh, how we love you. Again, we get to come to you and dig in the beautiful, rich treasures of your word. Father, I thank you for simplicity in your word, not forgetting the roots of Christianity. Being drawn closer to Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, because he practiced these feasts while on the earth, other than Give your only begotten Son. That was your greatest gift to take our place on the cross and in hell. Jesus took our place and you made it so simple that we just believe in your Son. We just believe in your only begotten Son, Jesus. And we live a life of repentance, Lord. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing to me revelations of the precious Word of God. Lord, put a hunger in us that can never be quenched, can never be fulfilled, we could never, ever stop being fascinated by you. I never, ever want to be apathetic to you, Lord. I never want to be apathetic to your presence, to your glory, to your anointing, to your word, to you, O oh Lord. I love you, Holy Trinity. You're so precious, Father. So precious, Jesus. So precious, Holy Spirit. I love you. And I know many who are listening love you. Help us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, with the fear of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, by the power of the sweet Holy Spirit. Amen. Numbers, chapter 29. Feast of Trumpets. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work, for you it is a day of blowing the trumpets. You shall offer a burnt offering as a sweet aroma to the Lord. One young bull, one ram, and seven lambs in their first year without blemish. Their grain offering shall be fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for the bull, two-tenths for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs. Also, one kid of the goats as a sin offering to make atonement for you, besides the daily burnt offering with its grain offering for the new moon or Rosh Chodesh, the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings according to their ordinance, as a sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord. Day of Atonement On the tenth day of the seventh month you shall have a holy convocation. 
you shall afflict your souls. You shall not do any work. You shall present a burnt offering to the Lord as a sweet aroma, one young bull, one ram, and seven lambs in their first year. Be sure they are without blemish. Their grain offering shall be of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for the bull, two-tenths for the one ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs. Also, one kid of the goats is a sin offering, besides the sin offering for atonement, the regular daily burnt offering with its grain offering, and their drink offerings. Feast of Tabernacles On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work, and you shall keep a feast to the Lord seven days. You shall present a burnt offering, an offering made by fire as a sweet aroma to the Lord. Thirteen young bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year. They shall be without blemish. Their grain offering shall be a fine flour mixed with oil three-tenths of an ephah for each of the thirteen bulls, two-tenths for each of the two rams, and one-tenth for each of the fourteen lambs. Also, one kid of the goats as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the second day, present twelve young bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number according to the ordinance. Also, one kid of the goats has a sin offering besides the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and the drink offerings. On the third day, present eleven bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs, their first year without blemish and their grain offering, and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams and for the lambs by their number according to the ordinance. Also, one goat as a sin offering besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the fourth day, present ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish. and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number according to the ordinance. Also, one kid of the goats as a sin offering besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering and its drink offering. On the fifth day, present nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish and their grain offering, and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, by their number, according to the ordinance. Also, one goat, as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the sixth day, present eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish, and their grain offering, and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number according to the ordinance. Also, one goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the seventh day, present seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs in their first year without blemish. And their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs by their number according to the ordinance. Also, one goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering and its drink offering. On the eighth day, you shall have a sacred assembly. You shall do no customary work. You shall present a burnt offering, an aroma made by fire as a sweet aroma to the Lord, one bowl, one ram, seven lambs in their first year without blemish. 
and their grain offering, and their drink offerings for the bull, for the ram, and for the lambs, by their number according to the ordinance. Also, one goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. These you shall present to the Lord at your appointed feasts, besides your vowed offerings and your free will offerings, as your burnt offerings, and your grain offerings, as your drink offerings, and your peace offerings. So Moses told the children of Israel everything, just as the Lord commanded Moses, or Moshe. Okay, what I just want to touch on was the pattern that I noticed. The pattern I noticed with the offerings. So let's go back to the basic burnt offering. Whenever we read about a burnt offering in the Old Testament, it meant it always involved an animal. So what's interesting is for the trumpet feast, It involved 10 animals and then their grain offering and that was explained and as you notice that it's more for a bull, less for the ram and then less for each of the seven lambs. And then you have another animal as a sin offering. Besides the burnt offering, again, an animal with its grain offering for the new moon. So it wasn't the, so that's not the daily offering in verse 6. That is just the burnt offering specifically with its grain offering for the new moon. Or the Rosh Chodesh. And then also you're going to have that daily regular burnt offering. With its grain offering. And then when you go to the Day of Atonement... Again, 10 animals, plus the grain offering, plus a sin offering. And then when you get to the Feast of Tabernacles, that's when you see 29 animals on the first day. Because this feast lasts for seven days to the Lord. First day, 29 animals. Plus a sin offering animal. So that's 30 animals. And then each day, it gets less and less. 28 animals on the second day, plus the sin offering. Third day, 27 animals. Then 26 animals on the fourth day. 25 animals on the fifth day. 26 animals, or 24 animals on the sixth day. Sorry, 25 animals on the fifth day. 24 animals on the sixth day. And then on the seventh day, 23 animals. And this is in addition to a sin offering each day and the grain offering. And this is in addition to that daily offering to constantly remind of the foretelling of the Messiah. He's going to be the final sacrifice. I just... I just find that so fascinating. God was so specific. And so I just pray that we give offerings to the Lord in our daily lives. As the Holy Spirit taught us through Paul the Apostle, our bodies are a living sacrifice. Especially now, God. I just thank you. And that the temple points to Christ. The temple in the Old Testament always pointed to Christ every aspect of the temple, but the tabernacle points to us. 
We are the tabernacle of the Lord now in the New Testament under the New Covenant. And Jesus came to tabernacle with us, to dwell with us. The Word became flesh, John 1, 1. And so I just pray that God, you give us the gift of fascination with you, of never being bored, never being burnt out, never being apathetic or aloof to you and what you did and what you continue to do for us. In Jesus' name I pray by the power of the sweet Holy Spirit. Amen. And sweet friend, before we go, and sweet friend, I wanted to ask you, do you go to church right now in the area where you live? Comment below where you live. I would like to know and I will pray for you. Now I have a question, a very important question. If you died right now, where would you go? If it's heaven, do you believe you would go to heaven? Let me ask you this. If God were to say, when you got to heaven, why should I let you into heaven? What would you tell him? Would you say, I've been a good person. I paid my tithes. I went to church. I fed the poor. I visited the sick. I helped my parents. I helped my brother on and on. Well, God said in his word through the apostle Paul in Romans chapter three, verse 23, all have sinned. And Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And Romans 10.13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. I give you my life. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Sweet friend, what has changed? You now have a personal relationship with God. Jesus' death on the cross opened the door for you to have an intimate relationship with God. He is your Father, and He loves you and desires to take care of you. You are forgiven. It doesn't matter what you've done. When Jesus died on the cross, your sins weren't just forgiven. They were forgotten. You're starting all over again with a clean slate. You are on your way to heaven. Heaven and hell, sweet friend, really do exist. And if you die today, heaven will be your new home. You are a child of God. You now belong to his family. That means you can trust him completely to take care of you. He desires to meet your needs and help you live in health and victory. You might be asking yourself, now what? Pray. When you meet someone new, the best way to get to know that person is by talking to him or her. Well, that's what praying is, talking to God. You can talk about anything you want to. For example, how thankful you are for Jesus, any needs you have, or just say hello. Then, listen. God has much to say to you. You may not hear him with your physical ears, but you'll hear him with your heart. Next, read the Bible. Everything you want to know about God can be found there. You can discover his personality, his plan for your life, and how much he loves you. Think of the Bible as spiritual food that can help you grow into a strong Christian. Then, attend a church 
Find a church where you are loved and accepted and that preaches the word of God and has the move of the Holy Spirit. If you only have the word, you will dry up. If you only have the Spirit, you will blow up. But if you have both the Word and the Spirit, you will grow up. There you will find people who can guide and encourage you. And finally, follow the commandment of love. There is nothing you could have done to earn your salvation. It's a free gift. You follow God's commandments not to earn or keep your salvation, but because you love Him and want to be obedient to Him, God's greatest commandment to us is to love one another just as He loves us. Each day, strive to follow this love commandment. If you mess up, just ask Him to forgive you and help you. Your life will continue to be transformed by God's great love for you. And so that I may get to know you better, let me know in the comments where you are from and any prayer requests and I will take it to the throne of God and intercede for you. That means stand in the gap for you. Hallelujah. God said in his word that angels rejoice when just one soul has been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's light. And that's what's just happened. Congratulations, this was the best decision you ever made. And until next time, blessings to you.